Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Real Talk with Ben podcast. And I'm Ben, the host, because that's my name and this is my podcast. And yeah, so we're back for another episode uh, and I'm super excited to be here. So as of la- as as I said, if I could speak, as I said last episode, I would be talking about this episode about just some... Um, just some things I've been looking forward to as a missionary, some things that, um, have I, I've thought about some of those kind of things. And yeah, I just kind of wanted to share those things with you all. And maybe even some things I've noticed so far, um, that I think will be really interesting to see how they, uh, play out in the future. But before I even get started, um, I just want to say thank you so much for listening, but also make sure you guys uh, tune into my YouTube channel if you're not watching this uh, video uh, style of the podcast. And if you're listening, well, go over to my YouTube because I'm pretty much having you know anywhere from three to four videos a week of podcasts as well as um, other videos such as what I've been doing, maybe where I've traveled and certain things like that. So I just want you guys to stay in tune of what's going on over here other than just listen to the podcast, even though I love you listening to the podcast. So yeah, so today is a great day. I hope you all are having a great Thursday, no matter where you are, or even if you're not listening to this on Thursday, I hope you're having a great day. Um, it's one of those things where I think we all need to have a little encouragement. And so I hope I bring you some, maybe some laughs, some encouragement. You never know what I can bring because I'm kind of a goofy guy. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, I want to go ahead and talk about, I guess they're not really like pros and cons. They're more or less just things I wanted to share. Some things that, um, you know, God has really, um, put on my heart that I hope can happen while I'm here. Um, as well as just some, uh, things that I've been thinking about as well. And so, um, one of the biggest things that I think any missionary or really anybody in ministry um, thinks about is really just the idea of, um, I guess, really the idea of how am I going to be used for ministry and how am I going to be, um, and how is God going to use me? And, and it's something that I think about quite frequently. And I thought a lot about when um, I was even before I came, I I think, um, if I wasn't thinking that, then I'd be thinking that in the wrong mindset. And in all reality, it probably wasn't, wouldn't be a good thing if I wasn't thinking about that. And so, um, it's been kind of interesting as I've, um, as I've went through, um, you know, getting here and as I've went through the process, you know, over the last six months or so of just, um, getting ready for this moment and, and, arriving here, um, it, it, like I said, last episode, it's kind of surreal. It it sort of, it hit me before I left, like right when I was hugging my parents and everything, but it really sort of started hitting me. I, I say like when I walked into, um, into the office, I really on like Monday morning and I was like, wow, this is like real, you know, this is happening. And, um, I think one of those things that kind of made it also real was when I went to this, the store in the, in the mall with one of my Hungarian friends and, uh, I got a new, I got a SIM card for my phone so I can have like a Hungarian phone number. And that got super real for me because I was like, Whoa, I don't even have my own old phone number anymore. And so, you know, those are the things like that, that you really start, you know, realizing, you know, how real it is. And, And the reason I share all that is because, you have an idea of how God will use you and you have an idea of like, you know, maybe the hopes and the dreams and the, and what you, you wish might happen. But at the end of the day, you don't really know until you step foot into a ministry or you step foot into something that is God's going to do with you. And, um, for me, that's really been impactful of my life. And that's really been, really the story of, of kind of my life. And, and as you know, from high school to college to missionary stuff, it's all kind of been the same pattern of, I didn't really know what I was doing or getting into until God really opened my eyes and I could see different things. And and he's obviously done that already. Um, like I feel like through even just getting here and not only seeing the encouragement, but also seeing like the, the joy people have to work here and to be missionaries and to serve here. Um, that's, what's been really, really cool. And, 
you know, I haven't had a, I've only had like a couple meetings, but each meeting, it just feels so much more real. And it feels like, all right, these are all people that have the same mindset as me. They want to serve. They want to share the gospel with kids, with families, with churches, you know, or, or people that are going to these churches and, and businesses like that's all they're here. They want to do. Um, and I'm not saying that anybody in the States, you know, wasn't doing that or they, they haven't done that. And I have many people that are doing that in the States right now, but in my, you know, surrounding the people, you know, um, sometimes when you're so on fire for doing ministry, you know, I don't know, for me, it just felt like sometimes I was on my Island. It was like, it was me and then the rest of the world. But in reality, when I came here, I realized it wasn't, it was just, you know, you're in the right place where God wants you. And, and that's the thing. The big thing is just having peace, knowing that God is using me, um, where I'm at. And so that's kind of where I wanted to, to start was just talking about how I really wanted, how I really want is, is how God uses me. And, and that's a goal of mine. And, and I know he will. Um, it's just kind of interesting to see, you know, what, what is next and, um, you know, what, what's going to be happening. And like I said, a year is a long time. I've said that before and I'll say it again. A year is a long time. Pardon me. Yeah. So I have to record at night, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a long year, but I'm excited to see what God, uh, does with me in the future and, uh, what he will continue to do. Um, with this ministry here at Word of Life, um, it's a great ministry. And so that's kind of like the main point of, of really what I'm looking forward to. I think another big one, and I've noticed this, um, I actually talked with this, one of my coworkers about this today. Um, one big thing for me is um, getting to know people outside of my bubble. And I know that sounds, especially if you want to Cedarville, that sounds so Cedarville cliche, um, but it's so true for me. I even I realized when I got here, the people that welcomed me, I've known them for years. Um, the people I've kind of even just talked to while I'm here, I've known them for years. And I, I just kind of noticed when I sat down and when I was, you know, even at dinner or at lunch, you know, I was realizing that that I had such a limited circle. And, and it's not that the students or maybe some of the new staff didn't come up and see me um, or that I didn't go, you know, it was more or less I was just expecting the normal people to sit with me. And when I realized that that wasn't happening, I realized, whoa, like that's on me. That's me using like, oh, I think everyone knows me because I've been here. And that's something that I've been praying about. And I've been asking God, like, like apologizing almost in the sense of, oh, I really was apologizing, not almost. Like I was somewhat sometimes thinking sometimes outside of, what really it was like, I'm a newbie. Like, you know, I think sometimes I'm thinking, well, I've been here so many years that, you know, I'm not a newbie, but in reality I am, I'm a new guy. I, not a lot of people know me. And that's where I have been asking God to humble me and, and just shape me in the sense that, all right, Ben, you're here to, you're here to serve me. This means I'm going to have to humble you. And that's what I want. And so, I, a big challenge for me, and it's a goal, it's a challenge, it's, you know, everything in between is just meeting new people, enjoying being around new people, and ultimately being able to do things with them that's going to lift, you know, share the gospel with as many people possible. But once again, I hate that I'm yawning. But this is what happens when the only time is at night. So, yeah, anyways. Uh, <laughs> um... Yeah, so I think that's a, a big thing for me is just staying focused, uh, staying excited, um, but also being intentional and building relationships. Um, I can't do this on my own. I I can't just you know expect to be the solo time. And what I mean by that is like just being by myself all the time, or uh, only hanging out with people that are you know either intermissionaries or missionaries like. I need to have the ability to step out of my comfort zone and hang out with people that I might not normally hang out with. And I know that's kind of a cliche, but it's kind of true. You know, I think sometimes we have that tendency to not want to get out of our comfort zone and uh, especially when it comes to relationships. And so 
that's kind of a prayer of mine and a goal. And that kind of leads into that kind of that next one is just the idea of like getting out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, I'm one that I like routine. Uh, if you ask anybody that knows me, I like routine. I like knowing where I want to sleep every night. I like knowing where, um, my food comes from and all that. And like, even already it's challenged me. Like I, you know, I'm used at home to be able to lay, you know, lay on my bed. And then when I'm hungry, I just go to the kitchen and grab a snack or grab a drink. And, you know, the first couple of days I didn't have any groceries. So like, I was just like eating when I got the chance to eat and it, and it sort of humbled me. It sort of was like, dude, you're not, you're on America. This is not about you. You need to suck it up and you need to do what God blesses you with and, and allow whatever God blesses you with. And, you know, for me, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I didn't really get any snacks or anything until Saturday when I went out with one of my friends and we got a whole bunch of things. But, you know, I think sometimes we take for granted of what we're given in America, especially, um, and that's a topic for another day. But that's one thing I've even noticed. I've been here like five, six, you know, well, actually over a week now. And um, that's one thing I've noticed is like you're, you know, when you're so used to everything being available, that's just what you get used to. And I've learned that not everything is as easy as it sounds. You know, it's not always going to just be handed to you. You need to work for it. And sometimes you just need to wait and, and sacrifice a little bit for it. And so that's a big thing for me in this, this process of being a missionary is just being okay with, um, I guess the normal being, uh, sometimes you don't know where you're going to sleep every night. Sometimes you don't know when you're going to get your groceries next. Like when you rely on people to, to help you and you're relying on people to give you advice, like those are the things that come, I guess, with the job description. And so, yeah. And so I, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready to, you know, obviously I've only been here a week. I've really only been working for less than a week and doing ministry and, and being with ministries and stuff like that. And so I'm just super excited to kind of, I, I tell people this, I think when I get through March and when I kind of get to the end of March, I'll have a better idea of like how it feels, uh, what it's like. And, um, you know, that sort of thing where, um, I think these first couple of weeks, it kind of is all real fast. It's all, it's all speedy. It's, it's, you don't really have time to think about it. You just kind of, you go with the day and, and sort of like that. And, you know, as you guys know, uh, I shared one of my YouTube videos of, you know, the room tour, you know, that's, that's place one. Like, you know, as you're listening to this, uh, within the next week and a half, I'm moving to another place that I'll be living for a couple of months. And, um, when I first heard that, like, you know, I back it up, you know, one of my goals was to live with two of my missionary buddies, you know, we talked about in the summer, if if I did come over, you know, this was an option, I could live with them. And it's all grand and dandy. But God had a different plan. And and God knew that I needed to learn on my own. And I'm okay with that. You know, like right now, I'm living by myself. Um, this next place I'm living to, I'll be living by myself as well. And and I'm okay with that. Um, it's just, it's part of, uh, it's part of something that you have to go through. And, um, especially as a missionary, like you don't get to just choose, pick and choose where you get to live. You know, it's what God opens the doors up to. And, um, but that's, what's really cool is like, it's challenging me, like, um, other than going to Cedarville, but I really didn't live on my own. So this has been the first time I kind of, this, this has been the first time where I've kind of lived on my own in a sense where I'm, you know, paying rent, where I'm doing those sort of things because, you know, I've been blessed to be at Cedarville where, you know, I'm just paying my board and tuition. I've been at home where my parents have, you know, allowing me to live there still. And, and so those things kind of come in play and you don't, and you don't necessarily think about all the other, you know, you know, ideas, I guess, or the, the, um, you know, other things that you might, might think about. And so, yeah, that's that's something that is is kind of been you know hitting me home and um, humbly be and again I'm yawning I hate it so sorry um, that's gonna f- hear sounds so weird in the audio but um, yeah and so I guess another I guess a big thing I wanted to kind of talk about was just um, 
I guess it's kind of all in one, I guess, but um, the idea of, um, I don't know, I guess I, you know, I get questions sometimes of like, you know, what are you scared about? Um, And I know I talked about that a little bit last episode of how like, you know, being away from family and stuff. And I guess I haven't really, you know, thought about it until I was preparing for this. And as I was just thinking, you know, I'm honestly the biggest thing I'm scared of. And it's something that I've been praying about is, you know, letting God down or not doing what I'm supposed to. Um, And it's it's a fear that I, I know I shouldn't have if I put my mind in the right place and that I keep, you know, I, it's the same sense in, in that, in that fear is also the fear of, you know, falling away from my devotion time, falling away from my journaling time, like these kind of things that in all reality, I shouldn't worry about and I shouldn't be scared of and, and scared of letting God down, but it's our human anatomy. It's our sinful nature that, these are part of the things we think about and, and I'm thinking about it. And it's a prayer of mine that I, that I stop thinking about it and I just go along with what God has planned for me. And I continue trying to stay uh, diligent and focused and, and on top of things, but I'm not, I'm not naive enough to think that, you know, you know, Oh, it's not going to happen. You know, I'm not, I'm not that naive. Um, it's, it's going to happen where there's going to be times where I, I, I struggle with it and I have to own up to it and I have to be honest with myself and um, honest with God. And so that's a big area. Like if you were thinking about prayer requests, it's a big area for you to be praying about for me um, as I as I go through this. Um, and I guess like another big topic that um, I kind of want to talk about, you know, it's getting near the, I know these near the end of the episode. I know these two episodes have been kind of short, but um, I've kind of been, I didn't really have a ton to talk about. So, um, but another a bigger topic that I want to talk about was, um, I, I guess for me, it's, uh, what do you miss most about home? It's actually a question I got from a Hungarian here. I've been here just so about a week and that's a question I get. And, um, it's funny because I was sitting at home actually, or sitting here at, at, in, in the castle and randomly just was thinking, uh, about my family. Um, this past Sunday, my cousin and his, uh, his fiance just gave birth to a new baby boy. And, um, if anybody know our backstories, our family, our family's been through a lot with that, with um, especially that part of the family. And um, when people ask me, what do I miss about home? You know, I, I try to ignore it. You know, I try not to think about it. Um, I try just to put it behind me and just kind of say, well, I miss my family. But I've realized I can't just hide behind it. I can't just try to, to push it behind the scenes. I have to remember that it's, it's going to be there for a while. It might be there the whole year I'm here. It might be there for a little bit, but I talked about last episode and I I wanted to get more specific is what do I miss about home? I, I miss, I miss being able to go up and see my grandpa's grave. You know, I miss having those talks with my grandma, um, being around my mom and dad, um, my church family. You know, I miss those things. Don't get me wrong. I miss those things a lot. And so that is what I miss about home. But I also consider this my home. And so the way I answered this question was I said, I miss things in my American home, of course, but I have what's here and that's friends, friends I consider family. Most importantly, I've always said that home is where God is placing me. And and right now this is home. Right now, this is where God has me. 
And so this is home. There's no way else I can look at it, but looking at it as the sense of my God has placed me here for this next year. Whether that's going to be longer than that or whether I go back to the States. So whenever somebody asks me that question, I usually just look at them and say, well, I I am kind of home. Yeah, I don't have my family around me. And yeah, that can be hard, but hello, we're in the 21st century now. Um, I'm able to have those FaceTimes, those those, um, calls on the phone that sometimes you wouldn't be able to have, um, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And that's a blessing of being in this age when I can do ministry with the ability to call home. And so, um, I just wanted to take the time, I guess, to just share about that because I think that's such a big component of sometimes missionaries being sad or, or scared from being away from home or nervous. And I'm not saying I don't feel those, but I know what my mom and dad would say, and that's it's where God wants you. That's what my mom and dad would say. And they're right. As much as I know they miss me and I miss them, it's I'm where God wants me, and, and that's who I'm here to serve. No one else. I'm here to serve them or serve him. <laughs> not serve them. Serve him. Uh, so um, I, I hope what you get out of this, uh, of this episode specifically today, and I know it wasn't a meaty episode or a funny episode, but it's one of those episodes I wanted to have uh, where I just talk about some of those things that I'm nervous about, what I'm looking forward to, and because I think they all play a big part into what this ministry is, of what I am doing here. Um, even though at times I think we get a little nervous or get a little scared of what God's doing, but I I know God has a great plan and I know that God in the end will do some amazing things with me. Um, I just have to do my thing, uh, while honoring him. And so, um, and again, that's why I'm continuing doing these podcasts. You know, people ask me why you continue doing these podcasts and why do you continue doing these videos when, because these are part of ministry. I started my whole YouTube and uh, career and, and all that. And, you know, I worked from my computer, using my computer's camera all the way up to a bought a camera. I bought more sound equipment. I bought more video stuff. I did all of that because I realized when I started it, it was because I needed to have a place to get out what I was thinking because of when my grandpa passed away, but it started slowly changing into the way I could use this ministry and sharing my thoughts and sharing things that I've learned and sharing videos from my ministry. And, and it basically turned into the Bowden experience. And the reason why it's called the Bowden experience and the reason why my podcast falls under the Bowden experience, because it's seeing what God is doing through my eyes, through his ministry. And and that's the sum of what I, the reason I have this and the reason why I do this. And so that's why I'm continuing to do it. It's not for me. It's not for even my friends or my family. It's, it's for anybody that wants to listen to hear about what God is doing in a young man's heart. And hopefully when they see that, they see God's glory. And hopefully when they see that, they understand that I'm not here to for fame. I'm not here for the glory. I'm here to share about God's glory and share the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. So if you're listening for the first time or you, you've you tuned in every once in a while or you're, you're like, man, I, I'm just supporting you as a friend. Well, I'm here to tell you there's nothing greater in this world to the, be able to lay down your life and say, God, I, I, I don't understand fully but I want to live for you. I want to give my life to you. Or maybe you've been struggling in your faith and you want to say, Lord, I want to get my walk back with you. There is nothing in this earth tonight, tomorrow, three days from now that can be greater than that. That can be greater than just giving your life to Christ. It doesn't matter how old, how young, what your job is, what you love to do, as long as you put your mind towards Christ, you can do everything for his glory. And it is one of the best feelings in the world. 
So I hope you could do that. And if you ever need to talk, you know I'm just a couple minutes away or a couple comments away from just talking with you and, and hearing you out. So, yeah, it was a deep episode. It was a tough episode, but I, I wanted to share that off my heart. So once again, thank you for listening. If you're listening on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening, thank you. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Hit that subscribe button. You'll see more. You'll hear more. Um, and I, I really hope this is an encouragement to you. Um because it truly is a passion of mine. And so once again, thank you. Uh, I appreciate all your support. And as always, we'll talk next time.